I want to thank you so much for deciding to invest back home. Thank you. You are living in the States. Yes. Comfortable life. Yes. Everything there. Mm. But you decide to come back home and invest. Yeah. Make great investments like this, impacting the community as well directly. Correct. In the US, I own a company. Mm. And of course, we employ people that are making some good money. Mm. But I feel like the employment I've created here gives me so much satisfaction and fulfillment. I personally believe in fair wages. Mm. So I think I'm one of the highest paying farmers in Uganda. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I haven't done the research on that, but mm. I think. Some of my guys, my teammates here, mm. when I came to this area, they were unemployed. Wow. So for me, I feel like um, the, the purpose that I serve here is a lot more fulfilling mm. because you see that you're completely transforming someone's, not livelihood, but future. It's amazing to go out there, mm. but let us go with the mentality of I'm coming to learn and pick as much as I can mm. to come and impact my mm. nation. Mm. Because if we all come back, mm. we don't have to come back permanently. Mm. But if we choose, because when I invested in the farm, I wasn't living here, I wasn't living here even two months a year. But I put systems in place and I managed to successfully grow the farm away away from home wow so if we can come back and actually implement those mm. i believe the future of our nation is going to be bright interesting <laughs> hey, welcome. Thank you. Welcome to Air Farms. Thank you so much for coming me. Thank you. It's I'm a long drive, huh? Ah, it's a long <laughs> one from Kampala. Yes. And then this uh, rough road here. Yes. But we finally made it. That's great. I'm so fascinated by what I've seen here. You're doing an incredible job. Thank you. I'm glad you've come. My yeah. team is here. Okay. Um, they would love to just say hi and they'll go back to their duties. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah. I've never received such a reception in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Lawrence. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hello. My name is Sarah mm. Pasanea. I'm Ugandan, mm. born and raised here. Mm. Um, about 13 years ago, I moved to the US, mm. lived there, and mm. now I'm back and forth. Mm. Yeah. So basically, you left the US to come and invest in goat farming in Uganda? Yes. Should that be the title of the video? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I, I don't. I don't want to say I left okay. because I'm still living there. Mm. But I started the investment while mm. living in the US. So where do you spend most of your time? Uh, currently, I've been here a little bit more, mm. but we are we are doing half and half. Mm. Yeah, half and half. Yeah. Yeah. For those who are on the channel, we are at uh, Era Farm. I'm finding a hard time pronouncing that. Kindly help me tell them the farm name. <laughs> so the name is Air. Air. As in millionaire, billionaire. Oh, so, I see. And the story behind the name mm. is, it's a big story. Mm. As we'll go in, into its mm. depth, mm. but I'll just give a, a glimpse of it. Mm. I wanted to, based on my uh, research, mm. I wanted to prove mm. or find out that truly mm. people can make millions and billions out of farming. Immediately I thought of the word millionaire and billionaire mm. and the last four 
letters mm. in those words are mm. A I R E, which mm. is air. Mm. But also coincidentally, mm. my middle name Atire mm. ends with A I R E. Oh, interesting. And my married name Pasonea mm. ends with A I R E. Pasonea. So it was a perfect name. Wow. For... That's interesting, guys. I think by the time we live here, we shall be billionaires as well. <laughs> <laughs> I believe our viewers would like to know where the journey started. Mm. So this journey mm. started in, um, I, I like to say an unusual way, mm -hmm. because I was in the process of um, studying for my masters mm. um, in human rights, but I focused on food security mm. and poverty eradication. Mm. And one of the units we had to do as a research project. Mm. My research question was how can improved farming methods contribute towards the eradication of poverty and food security in Africa. Mm. But I narrowed it down to Uganda. Wow. Yes. Mm. So you must um, be a proud Ugandan. <laughs> I am a very proud Ugandan. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Throughout my research I researched different topics around farming mm. and improved farming mm. and I noticed that goat farming is a very lucrative business mm. and my question was how lucrative is it mm. and what do you need to improve it mm. to actually maximize mm. your potential for wealth creation. Mm. So I came across a program um, that the government was having called hmm. Operation Wealth Creation. Okay. And I researched, I went deep into researching on that program. I focused on a certain farmer. He was one of the very first farmers to import boas and savannas hmm. from South Africa. This is a boa. Okay. White body hmm. with a red hmm. head. Okay. And this is a savanna. Okay. So this guy might be about two months old. Okay. The savannas are purely white. white. Purely white. Entirely. Okay. Yes. How about the brown ones? So the brown ones, I have some karahalis, mm. but those are not many. Karahali? Yeah. Those are from, uh, is it the that side was... of, uh, again, South Africa? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So um, where is the improvement in the method of farming here? Mm. It's in the boas and savannas mm. because our local breed, it will take two years for a kid from birth mm. to two years before they can be able to get on heat for the first time. The Ugandan breeds. The Ugandan breeds. Mm. The boas and savannas, mm. we've had some get on heat at six months. No way. Yes. <laughs> Those guys are so fertile. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't have them at six months. Okay. We wait for them to make at least eight months mm. to make sure that um, the, you know the first pregnancy doesn't affect them. Mm. They're mature enough. Oh. So, but at eight Below months, that they cannot handle the pregnancy. They will, but they might have some complications. Oh, okay. So it's, it's advisable from the professionals mm. Um, mm. to. Wait at least until eight months before you serve them. Mm. Mm. But at six months, we've had goats mm. that have actually gotten on heat wow. at six months. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Bringing in goats from South Africa was a way of improving mm. our methods of farming. Mm. And that was that what was answering my question. Mm. How can improved farming methods mm. contribute towards poverty eradication mm. and food security? Mm. And once I narrowed into that project, mm. I did realize theoretically that indeed mm. Africa is so rich, I do free range. Mm. So basically, all I have to do is have one guy mm. go out with the goats mm. and they come back and start giving me money. <laughs> wow. I'm not, I'm not planting any feeds yet, at least for now. Mm. So Looking at the gifts that we have here in Africa, mm. the fertile land that we have, mm. the abundant grasses, mm. my farm has forages that are so rich mm. in, um, in protein. Mm. We have what is called the Vsana. Mm. Um, natural? Natural, not planted, mm. came with the land. Mm. Having seen the advantages, I saw how the project grew. I decided that I had found my answers theoretically, mm. but I wanted to find those answers practically. practically. 
and that is how we ended up with Air wow. Farms. Mm -hmm. This is where the magic happens. Where the magic happens. Yeah. So how many goats are we having here? Um, we we have in this pen we have about a little bit over three hundred. Male, female. This section is primarily for female. Mm. Uh, we separate our females mm. from males. Mm. Uh, practicing uh, what is called natural synchronization. And what's that? You know, those terminologies are too <laughs> difficult for me. <laughs> yes, so nature synchronization is a process where you remove males from the females mm. for a given period. Mm. It helps you to plan. For instance, here in Uganda, we have seasons, the rain season, the dry season. So we want to be able to produce during the dry season because mm. then um, complications are less. Mm. Complications like pneumonia and the bad, warm burden uh, is low. Mm. Uh, but also, it enables you to be able to produce kids in mm. groups. Mm. There are so many advantages to that. Mm. One of the advantages is that um, when you get to the point of selling for breeders, mm. which I'm both a breeder, but mm. I also um, do the slaughter, okay. but my primary mm. activity, I prefer breeding. Mm. Um, so for breeders, you're able to sell your animals in groups, mm. which gives you a bulk of cash mm. when you need it, mm. because they were born in the same time. time. Mm. Yes. But secondly, it mm. makes it easy for management, mm. because you have kids at once when you're dwarming the schedule mm. matches, mm. when you're vaccinating, mm. because when you're, buy you're buying vaccines, mm. they come in doses of 50 and above. Mm. So if you only have 15 kids mm. at a time. Mm. If you're vaccinating against, say, Cross Studios, mm. you have to buy to spend money on a dose of 50, mm. and then the rest you have to throw away. Mm. So it helps a lot mm. in cutting costs. It helps in management mm. and so many other advantages. So this is the exercising yard, mm. as you can see. The goats went out in the morning, went grazed, they came back, mm. um, they are resting. Okay, they usually go for grazing in the morning yes what time uh depending if it's the rain season mm. would say maybe 11 because you want to make sure that there's no dew mm. on, the, on grass. the grass yeah yeah do affect them it does affect them it causes the um, mouth and foot and mouth foot and mouth oh. um it cause it, it causes a lot of complications um mm. some of them just get blisters mm. if they they go and then the the worms are also still Okay. Before it's dry. But also goats prefer to go out to eat dry matter. Dry matter. Yeah. Mm. So the the wet the wetness is not good for them. Okay. So during the dry season, ten in the morning, we we let them out. Mm. Um they come back at around two, drink their water. We do have um a number of these. So what is very important mm. for in farming yeah. in, general. Mm, in general and because i started the farm mm. when i was abroad mm. i wanted to make sure that my workers are not giving excuses for not giving my animals water mm. so i made the work easy for them mm. in each pen i have this tap this tap mm. so here i have two taps mm. we fill this mm. then they fetch from here mm. and fill that Mm. so that my animals have water at all times. At all times. And That's why they are looking healthy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How many animals did you start with? In this pen in, I In start, the beginning? Yes, in this pen I started with um, about a hundred. A hundred. Yeah. And currently, the total number of the goats you have are how many? In, oh, as a total of yeah. the farm? Yeah. Uh, we are approaching a thousand. A thousand. Yes. That's a big number. So this is section B? This is section B. Mm. C. C. This oh. is section C. Okay. And most of the guys in here are our, our offsprings. Mm. So we have, um, for record purposes, mm. 
each goat you see with red tags, that's mm. an offspring. Okay. So we have a separation between offsprings and stocked. Mm. The stocked ones have green tags mm. and the offsprings have red tags. How about these ones without uh, tags? They fall off, so we have to redo oh. our... Um, tagging. Tagging. Mm. Yeah, they tend to fall off. How many males do we have here? Uh, right now we have 100. 100 males. Yes. So they do the work. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but actually these males, uh, our offsprings don't serve because that would be, you know what that yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. Inbreeding. Yes. And yes. inbreeding is dangerous in farming. So how would you control that? Because I see when they are taken for grazing, they are all together. Mm. How do you control that? That typically doesn't happen. The, the males graze separate. separate. They, the, we have a worker mm. specifically for this section, oh. for the males. Yeah. So they only get to mingle with the ladies, the female, at the time when of... When it's time for serving. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are mineral blocks. Okay. The, they, the, the, the gods love them so much. Mm. They encourage them to... First of all, they're filled with different minerals, mm. but also it encourages them to drink more water. Mm. You got to look so healthy. Thank you. How do you do it? It's, it's all about nutrition, mm. um, content in your grasses. Mm. Personally, right now, my animals are in complete free range, mm. but uh, I have, I'm lucky that the land I bought, mm. we have the, what is called the Usana. Mm. Um, so because goats are browsers, they mm. prefer to browse. Mm. And those Move Usana, around. Yes. Mm. Now browsing is eating from up, Okay. and grazing is eating from oh, down. Guys, I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, mm. So we have quite a bit of Vusana in mm. our land and we have a lot of other nutritious Plants. forage okay. uh, on, on this farm. Mm. So that's the blessing from God mm. that, it, that we have. When you Airbus. bought the land, it came with that. It uh, came with that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But for people with small land, mm. of course, you have to balance mm. that there. You have to have some uh, carbohydrate, mm. um, grasses, you have to have proteins. Mm. But for me, I'm lucky. All I have to do is set mm. them out, mm. they eat and come back mm. looking nice. Yeah, how do you do it with the water? Because mm. I can see they all have a steady supply of water. Yes. How do you make it? So I invested in mm. a borehole. Oh. I drilled down. If you would like, I can show you. Yeah, we can go there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The boa hole. Yeah. So this is the boa hole. Okay. Awesome. And here. Are how, how deep is the boa hole? Uh, it's about, the depth is about 82. 82 meters. Yeah. Okay. This is a okay. huge panel. Yes, mm. but surprisingly, we would, when it would be cloudy, we wouldn't get enough water. Mm. So I had to invest in batteries. Yep. So we are able to switch from, we, we use both. Mm. Yeah, we, we, the system we put in, you can still utilize both where you can get straight from the panel mm. or switch to the batteries. Can we have a, demonst a demonstration if it's okay? Sure, manager. Can you show them how it works? For instance, if we choose to get straight from the panel, mm. what do you do? Katiano, uh, your control box. A controlling gabino of you now. Pano, a two sesamo no murido. Katikano, the Kagavida, which much on the Kagavida batteries, the Kagavida and a pump. For now, to the Mukupampinga, you know, a counting to Niga, Walioka, and Kariko Onando, no Kaniga, no Tekako off. They know your cojeno or take exactly where you are. But for now, Tulikumusana, Tukubisa Panosa, Tetuliku Batreza. Yes, on Galatola, can a Kaliko Sola, Kaliwa Blue. Can a Kabatri, Kaliwa C. Nekano, K. No. Ye, this Panojo and Gedi. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. 
kati ye ejene gatta kuzino batteries esawa zino na bidi wansi nti bidi off bidi mu kuchajinga kati guno mukono sawa zino ngutadde off kati buli kimu kiri off kubana sose bijja ko wali control box so sawa zino nzije kusola kati ngenda kuteka ko batteries afe ngaze zi pumping oh before you do any changes mm. atonda ba kubako ntuka tuka we na jokola yes omukono guno gwino kubera mu off gwina kubera mu off mu makati mu makati awo okay wako ka off okay then olio ko chusa wanno mm. wo chusa za wanonga guno guli eri obeno wansi mm. obo genda bi byo cha byonna okay so okay. kati wano olo nyambu sawa guru kati tola beno nti eraze yes Elegant kati ngenda kola mulimu. Mm, ndi ready. Ndi ready okola mulimu. Then ne wano ne nyambusa. Mm. Ebyo tebisobola kola mm. nga sitadde mujia. Okay. Kati wano nga teka wano wansi. Kati ya tuli ku battery. Okay. Na hifo now tutetweta aga battery bwa tuino msana. So tujja kudda yo tukolechi. Tudde ku sala ya fe. <laughs> yes, it's true. It's true. The sun is too much, guys. <laughs> but how do you cope with this sun? Is it always like this? Uh, it gets really hot out here. Mm. Mm, so sometimes it's a challenge. Mm. And those are some of the challenges that farmers face. Mm. We've been blessed. It's been raining. So mm. we have plenty of grasses. Mm. But this area specifically mm. of Kayunga gets dry spells very bad dry spells let me ask a question okay. is this profitable i would say yes mm. definitely because um i've i've sold quite a number mm. but and yeah the market is really available the market is ready available i think you can see in the background if you're able to show mm. we have set up a meat shop okay so this industry you have different markets mm. i do breeding because mm. i have good breeds okay but i also do meat i slaughter mm. and sell the meat mm. and for me how really, about milk the milk now um i don't have milk goats all mm. my goats are for meat mm. it's the cows Oh. That I have for, oh, we for are coming milk. to that. Yes. This farm is not only about the goats. <laughs> now, before you forget about the shop, kindly tell us where people can find your meat. We are setting up a shop in Munyonyo oh, on Munyonyo. Wava Road, Kingsgate Mall. Kings Junction? Yes. Before reaching Gaz. Uh, Gaz in, Petrol Station? Yes. Gaz, uh, no, it's, it's Shell. On okay, the after the mosque. Yes. After the mosque. Yes. Now, I've spent my entire childhood okay. in that area. I went to Munyonyo when I was four years old. Wow, <laughs> wow, wow. Yes, it's King's Junction. So the King's Gate is in Kabaragala oh. and King's Junction. Okay, is done King's in Junction in Munyonyo. Yeah. So in case you're around Kampala and you would like to try her meat, you know where to find her. Are you fine to put up contacts? Sure. Okay, she'll give us the contacts and we put them on the screen there. In case, I don't know if you can deliver. We do, we deliver. You deliver? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And the model that I actually created mm. in this business, mm. like I was explaining, I'm trying to, I'm trying to actually um, create an actual industry mm. through farming. Mm. That farming doesn't only end at the farm. Mm. You know, get, farm get prices are so low. You mm. can hardly break even. Oh. So I'm trying to encourage farmers to reach mm. the final consumer as much as you can. Mm. Like endeavor mm. to reach the final customer. Mm. The person that's consuming the product that you're producing on your farm. Mm. The sooner you, the further you get to them, mm. or the closer you get to them, mm. the more profit margins mm. you're able to make. How has this farm impacted lives of the local community here? It, that's a very, a very good question. It's amazing. It melts my heart mm. because um, in the US, I own a company 
Mm. And of course, we employ people that are making some good money. Mm. And so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's good to create employment anywhere. Mm. But I feel like the employment I've created here gives me so much satisfaction and fulfillment and it, the purpose that it's very purpose driven mm. yeah I, it, some of my guys my teammates here mm. when i came to this area they were unemployed wow two of them these guys yes. surrounding us here yes mm. two of them came mm. to i think i i don't have better word to use but i'll use the normal term they use to porter when, oh, yeah. when Helping we were constructing construction. yes yeah. And they asked for jobs mm. after the construction was done. Okay. So I was able to employ them. So for me, I feel like um, the, the purpose that I serve here is a lot more fulfilling mm. because you see that you're completely transforming someone's not livelihood, but future. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I personally believe in fair wages. Mm. So I think I'm one of the highest paying <laughs> farmers in Uganda. Yes. <laughs> I think. I haven't done the research on that, but mm. I think. How many staff do you have so far? <clears throat> right now we currently have 11. 11? Yes. That's a big number of people. Yeah. And guys, the farm is not even two years old. Yes, we'll make two years in March. In March? Yeah. Imagine within that short period of time, she's having, you said, over 1,000 goats? Close to. Close to 1,000 goats. And besides that, we have cows around. Yes. Uh, we have other things you're investing into here on the farm as well. Can you kindly talk about them? Yes, so like we said, I have dairy cows. Mm. Um, the, well, one of the motivating factors for me to, I started primarily with goats. Mm. That's all I did in the beginning. Mm. But I realized that expenses are there consistently mm. to run a, a goat's farm mm. and with a goat's farm it's going to take you at least a year to a year and a half before you can start making money mm. i didn't want to get fed up of the pro project mm. because i kept I, I would keep injecting in money mm. so i came up with the idea i got some cows i started with a few mm. that were milking cows even those few within mm. three months they were paying the workers and I was only buying food. Wow. Yes, from the milk that mm. we were getting. Then um, eventually now they pay the, the, the salaries, mm. the food and maintenance of the farm wow. comes from the milk. Milk only? Sales. Yes. Now you can imagine the kind of profit she's making off the goats <laughs> <laughs> because the cows take care of all the expenses in the farm. Mm. Mm. But I feel like with us, the youth, mm. if we really engage mm. in farming, mm. given the different gifts that we have in Africa, mm. um, natural gifts that mm. we have in Africa, I feel like there's so much potential that is untapped already. Mm. Yeah. And I do that, but I am not just to say I, I, I am an educated woman, mm. so I could get a job doing whatever, you know, in my industry. Mm. But I've chosen to, to do this mm. and prove to the world mm. that we can actually ask the youth if we engage in farming at a serious level, at a commercial level, with, with a mentality of I want to create wealth and create uh, a brand mm. out of farming, I believe the contribution towards our nation will be enormous. Before we end the video, one last words to Ugandans in the diaspora <coughs> who are um, out there. Yes. Please tell them something. So everyone out there, I've been there, it's amazing, it's mm. comfortable. Mm. <laughs> but at the end of the day, this is home. Home is always the best. Home. Mm. Whether best or not, mm. but it's home. Mm. You cannot run away from that. Mm. And um, if we choose to enjoy the comforts, out there mm. instead of coming 
mm. to actually bring those comforts here, mm. then our nation is going to start to stay there. Mm. But if we transfer what we've learned, what we've acquired, mm. we go there, gather our capital, come back here mm. and invest in our nation mm. and grow our brothers and sisters, mm. grow our nation, our motherland. Mm. Um, the future is bright. Wow. Thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, that was an interesting episode. Now, if you have a story, an inspiring story like her, you can reach out to me on that email I've put on the screen and also my phone number and we can share that story to inspire everyone out there. You can see she's a young lady, but she's taking big strides. Her farm is growing very fast. She started not even two years back, but right now she has close to 1,000 goats. How many cows? <laughs> she doesn't want to disclose the numbers. 